And now we'll have a presentation from Vision. Hello, everyone. Thanks very much. And uh, it's really a great pleasure for me to be here. It's a familiar location because I worked for many years down the hall when it was the Fisherman's Union, and I spent many years of my career in the labor movement. My name is Jeff Meggs. I'm running for a uh, third term on city council with the Vision Vancouver team. And with me today are Nikki Sharma uh, from our Park Commission, who's running for a council spot. Raymond Louie, who many of you know, is a longtime veteran of City Hall and also trade unionist. Trevor Lowe, the current Park Board Commissioner. And I'm going to be very brief because I'd like them all to say a couple of words. Uh, we're very pleased that uh, you're considering supporting Vision Vancouver again. We feel a strong partnership with the members of Town Hall 4 because we know that without your contribution, the city would function very poorly, if at all. Uh, Gregor Robertson, our mayor, has again recommitted to not expand contracting out to make sure that wherever we can bring in new processes, that uh, members of Town Hall 4 will be there delivering those services in your areas of jurisdiction, fighting to keep things like the PE functioning well, dealing with free collective bargaining, and we're very pleased that the Labour Council has endorsed every one of the candidates that we put forward this time. Uh, those values are going deep in our organization. We are very uh, committed to our relationship with the trade union movement, and we look forward to expanding and growing on in the years ahead. Affordable housing, investments in transit, expansion of child care, those are the kinds of commitments we're making, and we hope that you will give us every possible support on Election Day. So I'm going to turn it over to Nikki to say a couple of words as well. Hello, everybody. Thanks for having us here today. My name is Nikki Sharma, running for council with Vision Vancouver. I've been on the park board for three years now. I've been really proud of the work that we've done at park board, not only by expanding accessibility, but increasing the low-income users for our centre. The city has an important role for providing affordable services, but also supporting a really strong workforce. Um, and one of the things I'm really proud of is our commitment to expand child care spaces. There's already been a tenfold increase of child care in in the city and we have a commitment to continue doing that and that matters to me as a mother living in this city. While well, I was on Park Board I had my first child and I'm experiencing that struggle of living in Vancouver and happy to support a government and be part of this that's changing that. Um, um, I'll second uh, Councillor Meg's commitment to the, our labour force at the Park Board we benefit from a really strong um, and healthy labour force and we're very lucky to have that. Everybody benefits that with our parks and our community centres. and. And thank you all for your hard work in that. Thank you. Uh, my name is Trevor Loke. I'm a Park Board Commissioner and the current chair of the uh, Park Board Committee. Uh, I'm just very proud of the relationship we've managed to have with uh, QP 1004 and QP 15 uh, over the past three years. We've had a collaborative working relationship together where we've uh, protected the jobs that we've had uh, at the Vancouver Park Board, while also uh, making uh, expansion in uh, public uh, union jobs uh, as well, which uh, we're very proud of. One of our biggest uh, objectives at the Vancouver Park Board is improving equity and access for all users, and we've been able to do this through the renewal, uh, the starting process of the renewal of the joint operating agreement with our community center associations. Uh, and we've demonstrated that through the uh, new one card program that we've been able to bring in. And we now have 135,000 people across uh, the city of Vancouver that are on the one card as part of a, uh, that are enhancing our public recreation system for all people in our city. So we're extremely proud of that and we're looking forward to uh, a continued collaborative working relationship uh, with QB for moving forward over the next four years. So thank you very much. Thanks, Trevor. Uh, sisters and brothers, my name is Raymond Lee. I'm a full term councillor with the city of Vancouver. I'm a 31 year trade union member. I come out of uh, CP, uh, well, formerly CP, now Unifor, uh, Local 2000, and I see many familiar faces. I've, in fact, I was a delegate to the BDLC for many years uh, for my trade union and uh, sat in this very room, having many conversations that, like the, all of you are having. Uh, as uh, Jeff had indicated, we are committed to making sure that the trade union trade union movement and local town forum in particular are well supported. I can you know, say with confidence that I've had many conversations with your past presidents and your and with your with your reps, you know, Steve's here, uh, along with a couple of other reps that uh, I continuously have conversations with and it makes and what we're saying is that what I'm saying is that we're available for the conversations to make sure that your needs and your concerns are heard. I'm proud of the fact that uh, We've been able to conclude a number of contracts now, whether it be with the city or with uh, with uh, uh, the PE workers, without strike. Or and this is a stark contrast to what happened with the MPA. So we hope to have your support in this election. Thank you. Hey, uh, just a reminder, delegates, that the seventy thousand has already been approved in a previous uh, membership meeting. So basically, the committee had to uh, divvy up how I thought would be. Uh, would be fair to all the uh, 
the uh, parties and also an amount uh, set aside for for like uh, Oh, I'm sorry, I can't. <laughs> I move that the uh, recommendation to be accepted. Thank you. Okay, so, um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we had to put some money aside, obviously, for book offs, right? So, I mean, we've had a history of having uh, activists uh, work on the campaigns for the civic elections. So we, we're putting in 10000 to that. And also $8,000 in, like, a media campaign that we'll do. But we do have to have a meeting of the committee to decide, like, you know, where we're at in terms of the, uh, the, the materials. So uh, we're a little bit behind on that. We should be working on that. Uh, so those numbers are before you as is. Uh, as I had said again um, in the previous time, we feel that, you know, we want to see vision in there. It's obviously, what the and that's where the bulk of the money is going. We're also putting in a little extra for one city because they're a brand new party. And we feel that uh, they may have, they, they may grow to the point where Coke will no longer be around. Because I know that a lot of the Coke people have gone to one city, so that's why there's a little more money there for them as well. And, uh, you know, I don't really know, I mean, I, I honestly think that we have a lot of time left from now till the elections, that we can get some hard, ask, ask some hard questions of Vision and make sure that, you know, we will protect the interests of our services. So yes, we haven't asked those questions yet, obviously, this is still early in the campaign, but we certainly will have to, to nail them in terms of protecting our jobs and uh, trying, as, trying to have as little contracting, if, try not to have any contracting out happening in you know, our, uh, our campaign. Because I know that there was some discussion, I can't remember which party had said that they, they, uh, they weren't endorsing any contracting out but, you know, keep that in mind. You know, there are parties that say they're, they're not going to be contracting over. Thank you. Okay, is there any further discussion? Uh, just to clarify some of the discussion that happened around the money breakdown. So we took the total amount, if you don't mind, Frank, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, we took the total amount that we had to work with that's been approved by membership. And for the book off, what we wanted to figure out is what would be a reasonable amount of time, given the fact that people have jobs and can't just leave their jobs for long periods of time. And also the election period is fairly short. I mean, we knew this was coming now, so we saw it's barely five weeks left. So we took what we thought would be a reasonable amount of time, took the average amount of wage for a TV set on four member, and then figured out about how many weeks worth of book offs we thought members might ask for. Of course, if members don't request book offs for this, then we thought we could revisit that and maybe either go a little bit harder on more media, Campaigning, or perhaps revisit donations, perhaps to parties other than the current ruling party. In terms of how we broke it up with parties, uh, I'll be frank. Um, that we looked at the vision money because the object is to keep the NDA out of this election, okay? And frankly, also if you look at the actual policies of the Green Party, they're fairly conservative, especially around spending. So we'll just try and perhaps displace Councillor Carr. So in that, we looked at how much money we would have to spend, and this is with the matching that comes from BC and from National, to carry favor with Vision in the next round of negotiations, which as Byron mentioned are coming up, but also not give them the whole pie. And perhaps through the matching that's coming from BC and National, show our support for other parties as well, and say that our support is not unconditional. So and then the rest of the money was split up. Again, based on where we thought parties might grow or their potential to um, perhaps influence whoever the growing government is. So that was the logic to the breakdown. Okay, is there any further discussion? Seeing that, all those in favor, please show. Opposed? Okay.